Hi, I'm going to talk about the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics at its heart is a statement about a physical quantity called entropy. And we use the letter S for entropy and it has SI units of joules per Kelvin. Okay, now do not be deceived by the units into inventing your own formula. You don't take the energy of an object and divide by its temperature and get the entropy. That's not how you calculate uh, entropy. The um, entropy is a physical quantity that always increases in total when systems interact. So you may hear that entropy is the measure of disorder. You might hear that entropy is the spreading out of particles and, uh, and energy. To some extent, those statements are true, but they're not exact statements. I'll show you how to calculate entropy in just a bit here. But if you do calculate changes in entropy, they have to, in total, for interacting systems, add up to a to be greater than or equal to zero. And that's the second law of thermodynamics. If you take all of the changes in entropy for interacting systems, add them up, then they will be greater than or equal to zero. That's the most concise mathematical statement of the second law, but it still leaves unresolved how do we actually calculate entropy. So one way is a fairly direct, but actually not often useful formula, which is this one. The entropy equals the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of the number of microstates consistent with the macrostate. So microstates refer to possible velocities and possible locations. It doesn't really, it isn't very useful in, except in some highly contrived situations such as changing the size of a container or mixing two gases or something like that. Um, but that is, that is one way to directly calculate the entropy of a, of, a, of a system. Another way is when two systems interact by exchanging energy in the form of heat, then you can use this formula that the change in entropy for the individual will be equal to the integral dq over t. So if you have some sort of formula for the infinitesimal heat, you throw that in there, take the integral, and then you can calculate the change in entropy. Or if the temperature is constant, then this gets uh, quite simplified and you would just have Q over T. So this looks like, okay, yeah, energy over temperature, but it's the energy exchanged in, through the mechanism of heat divided by the temperature. And this is only true when that's how the systems are interacting only and when the temperature is constant. So just be careful before, uh, before using that formula. Okay, so two different ways to possibly calculate entropy. Sometimes what we do is use the second law in an indirect way. So we don't actually calculate the entropy, but due to the implications of the fact that entropy in total cannot decrease, we can make certain statements about the efficiencies of engines and the coefficients of performance of heat pumps. So the maximum possible efficiency of a heat engine operating between two temperature extremes is equal to this. One minus the low temperature or the temperature of the external cold system that's interacting with the heat engine divided by the high temperature system. Okay? So a heat engine operating between these two temperature extremes can be at most this efficient at converting uh, heat input into work output. Okay, for heat pumps, we would have a coefficient of performance maximum equal to the high temperature divided by the temperature difference between the high and the low temperature. That would refer to the maximum coefficient of performance for a heat pump used for heating. And then you would have the maximum coefficient of performance of a heat pump used for cooling. We would replace uh, the high temperature with the low temperature in the numerator and we would get something like this. Okay, So heat pump used for heating, heat pump used for cooling such as a refrigerator or air conditioner, that would be your maximum. Okay, If you were to build a heat engine with an efficiency greater than this, then you'd be decreasing the entropy of the universe. And likewise, if you had a coefficient of performance for a heat pump that exceeded 
uh, one of these calculations, then you would be lowering the entropy of the universe in contradiction to the, uh, to the second law of thermodynamics. So again, in practice, these are actually more useful formulas than calculating entropy directly. The efficiencies and coefficients of performances of heat engines and heat pumps are uh, dictated by the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, thanks for watching.